Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the CSRNET Mathematics July 2024. Today I will explain you how you can solve the problems related to the calculus of variation. Myself Dr. Harishkar, you can follow my YouTube channel where you can find the playlist of CSR UGC net. And you can see that I have uploaded the lecture related to the integral equation, differential equations, Cauchy problem, numerical methods and many more related to the CSRNET July 2024. All these lecture I have uploaded with the help of shortcut tricks. Apart from that, you can also find the various other lectures related to the CSR net examination. I am very sure that once you watch my this playlist, you will crack the examination in a very very simple manner. Don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel so that when I uploaded my next video, you will get the notification. Now, the first question which was asked in this July 2024, remember students, in this July 2024, the two question was asked from the part C on the topic calculus of variation and it is of 4.75 that means you can easily get the 9.50 marks in a very very simple manner. How you can get this 9.50 marks? If you already watch my these lectures on the shortcut tricks on the calculus of variation then you can easily get this 9.5 marks and solving each problem within the time period of one minute. Believe me students, if you watch, if you didn't watch so far, you can watch it and you will itself will say in the comment box, they, yes, these lectures are very, very beneficial for all of you. So now let's start with this question. First of all, what is the integration of this part? If I call this part is my f1 plus y dash square. Now, what is that? This function is my independent of x and y then what is the shortcut tricks as I mentioned you in this lecture once the function is independent of x and y what will be my solution solution is my alpha x plus beta fine I didn't use the ax plus b because the a and b are given in this case then if I call this function is my i then what will be my i integration from a to b square root of 1 plus y dash y dash is my alpha of dt so this will be if you because 1 minus 1 plus alpha is a constant so this is my correct fine now what is the remaining so your target what is your target your target is to find the value of alpha a and b fine now that's a very very simple the first way is you can substitute this value in these equations and find the value of alpha otherwise second way what is the alpha? Alpha is nothing but my slope. Fine. So can you, I, I can return these two points in terms of coordinates a and a square and second is b and b minus 5. So what is the alpha? Alpha is my slope. That will be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Fine. Otherwise, you can substitute these values in here. So you will see a square is alpha into a plus b and b minus 5 is alpha into b oh sorry beta plus beta now clearly say if you subtract them you will again get the same way but anyhow now my alpha will be this part fine this is my alpha now i can substitute this value of alpha in my this expression so what will be your i I can see b minus a will be cancelled out if you take an inside. So then the expression will be b minus a whole square plus b minus 5 minus a square whole square. Now your target is to find the infimum of this. Either you find the infimum of this or you can find the infimum of square. That is the same quantity. Fine. This is the same meaning. Now how you can find that? You can see that this is the function of the two variable. How you can find the minimum of the function of the two variable? I call this is my g. So partial derivative of g with respect to a is 0. Partial derivative of g with respect to b is my 0. So can you find the partial derivative with respect to a? Twice is a minus 4 times a b minus 5 minus a square is equal to 0. I can put on the right hand side. Similarly, for, with respect to b, it is twice b minus a and if you put on the right hand side, it's a twice b 
minus 5 minus a square. Now that's over. Now if you divide them, clearly say if you divide them, it will be minus 1 is minus of 2a. a will be half. Fine. So that value will be calculated. Now again, you can see alpha is my b minus 5 minus a square. Clearly say from equation number 2. Can you find the value of alpha? Alpha will be my minus 1. Fine. You can see alpha will be minus 1. So alpha is also computed. The only thing is my b. So I can substitute a is in this case. I can open this bracket. b plus b which is a plus 5 plus a square. I can substitute this value. Twice of b will be my half plus 5 plus 1 over 4. So 4 will be the LCM, 20, 20, 21 and 23. So what is the solutions? Now if I write the solution clearly for you in this case. So what are the values? A is my half, alpha is my minus 1 and B will be 23 over 8. That 2 will be divided. So I can substitute this value in this case. What will be your I? What is the B minus A? 23 over 8 minus half. Alpha will be minus 1. So 1 square is 1. So that is a 19 over 8 into root 2 is my correct answer of this problem. So you can see that it's a very simple approach. It's just like a function of the two variable. You have to find the maxima and the minima of this part. Don't forget to like and comment on this video and I recommended you, you must watch about my this lectures for the detailed explanation. Look at the second part. Again, because it's a part of the calculus of variation, you can see I can write the f, which is half y dash square plus y square and the condition of the isoprectic that is a lambda times x into y. Make sure student, you may consider as a minus, you may consider as a positive because lambda is always be the unrestricted sign. So you may take it as a positive or you may take it as a negative. That's on your choice. As already I explained you in these two lectures that, that whether you want to take it as a positive or negative answer will always same. Then what will be my Euler equation? This is my Euler equation. Fine. So can you find the value of Euler equation? This is y minus lambda times x partial derivative of it will be my y dash. So this will be y double dash minus y is my minus lambda times x. Clear? So what is the auxiliary equation is? m square minus 1 0. So my solution will be c1 e raised to power x, c2 e raised to power minus x plus particular integral. Can you find the particular integral? 1 over d square minus 1 of minus lambda x. I can take a negative as a common and then lambda is a constant which is outside of x. So since I have to return this is up to the power 1, that means only 1. Fine. Now look at the options and discard this. Look at the first option is cancel because it involvement of the x square, but we need only as a x. Second option is x square, again cancel out. Third option is the sin x, again we need only x, it will be cancel out. Third option, so since it, that means this case will be happen if lambda is equal to 0. But we already discard all the options. So the rest option C is my correct answer. Fine. So now since you are in the examination hole, so you can directly put at th third as the correct option. But if you really want to know wh whether the lambda is 0 or not, fine. And that must be the 0. So I can substitute this value of lambda, this value of y in this expression. So minus 1 to 1 x into e raised to power x plus c2 x into e raised to power minus x plus lambda times x square of dx is 0. Now, if you look about the options, all the options clearly say c1 and c2 are same. If you look about the all option coefficients, they are same. So I can take on c1 is constant. Fine. What is the integration of this? x minus 1 e raised to power x. What is the integration of this? Minus x plus 1 e raised to power minus x. What is the integration of this? Lambda times x cube over 3 from 1 to minus 1. Fine. So see 
c1 is a non zero if i substitute 1 is a zero if i substitute 1 is a twice e raised to power minus 1 plus lambda over 3 minus if you substitute the lower limits it's a minus minus plus 2 e raised to power minus 1 is a zero it's a minus minus plus lambda over 3 is equal to zero so clearly say lambda will be my g fine so once this number is zero the only solution in the form of third is my correct answer but since you are in the examination hall there is no need to solve like this way as i mentioned you you can discard the first second and the fourth option straight forward so your answer is only c is my correct answer. that's why i'm asking you you must watch about my these two lectures deeply you will increase your confidence level and your motivation level i hope you follow you can like share and comment on these my videos and subscribe my youtube channels and watch my all these lectures for your encouragement i hope you can subscribe my youtube channel and thanks for your support happy learning always